Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. I wanted to talk about Project 3, Greenhouse Gas Emissions, and walk through the project and show you what I'm looking for. The first thing you're going to do is make sure that you have all the group members who participated in this project at the top of your page. Then um, you're going to choose two states. I chose Wisconsin and Missouri, so you cannot choose those two states, either of those two, but you can choose any of the other states, including D.C., um, and then you're going to take a look at that data sheet that's going to be published there <clears throat> in your, um, it'll be posted in the assignment and, and along the side are all the states and then starting in 1990 and going all the way up to 19, uh, 2020, we have greenhouse gases emissions listed for each one. So if I look at Missouri for 1990, it was 26.22. So when I look at my answer sheet for Missouri for 1990, I have 26.22. So the, the data is there. You don't have to go out and find it. It's there. And I have a video <clears throat> right here on how to transpose data, data from rows to columns, and then you can copy them, paste them in. All of the states are going to have data from 1990 to 2020. Then you're going to take the data here from each row and you're going to find the measures of center and variation for each state, for Wisconsin and then for Missouri. We've done that in previous assignments this quarter, so you can look back and see how to find measures of center on GeoGebra if you don't know how to do it, or you can use Excel, whatever program you prefer to use. We need to find those. The only thing that GeoGebra doesn't show you is the variance. And the variance is the standard deviation to the second power. So you just have to find that once you know the standard deviation, you take that to the second power. Again, this is a sample, so you should be looking for sample standard variation, not population. So first of all, choose your two states. Make sure you put those two states here and here at the top so I know which state I'm looking at. List your data. Find your measures of center. That's number one. Note, you will notice in your problem it will say lead student and then checked by and checked by, which means there should be one person who takes the lead on this. They would put their first name there, and then there'd be two other people that would check that and make sure that you've everybody has looked at it. This is not a case where one person does it and nobody else looks. This is like one person does it, two people's, people check it. Okay, and so I might have that um, here. Let's see if I have... Yes, let me show you what that looks like when I'm looking at the student version. It has lead student and then checked by. So whoever did this problem took the lead on it, and then who were the two people that checked it after that was done. All right, so that's what you want to do for each of the problems. Next thing you're going to do is taking those uh, the data you found from number one is find your class widths for your two sets of data. Um, using seven classes. So you can see here that I took my maximum minus my minimum divided by seven, yeah, yeah, and found that. There's a video on how to find class width and how to round that correctly. So make sure that you're doing that correctly um, as you go through there. Next thing you're going to do is I use GeoGebra to draw histograms. That's what I prefer, but if you want to use something else, it's okay as long as your histogram is correct. Um, notice that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven classes. Each each bar represents a class. It is a histogram, and I have made sure that my starting point is my minimum value, uh, 19.45, uh, sorry, and then my maximum value is over here. I'm going to, after I make that, I'm going to copy just the graph take a screenshot of just the graph. And so you can do the snipping tool or something else you've learned how to do this quarter. Not the entire page, but just the two graphs from that. Notice that I have a label on each one of which graph I'm looking at. This is Wisconsin, this is Missouri. Um, and then it asks some questions. You wanna make sure that you paste those in there. And um, what general trend do you see for each state? So answer some trend that you see for those two graphs. Again, a lead and two check. On that, that, the next thing you're going to do is take the data from your two states and create two stack box plots. It's something we've already done this quarter, but there is a video reminding you how to do that. We're going to compare Missouri and Wisconsin, or Wisconsin and Missouri, whichever, but you need to label those. I just took a screenshot, put it in paint, and then typed the names beside that. Um, 
And so we're just label and pasting them there. And then we're going to find the fences for the two box plots above and show your work. Are there any outliers in either of the box plots? Number outliers would show up as little X's out here. So if you have an outlier, you'll see it if you've done that graph in GeoGebra. Um, there is a video reminder of how to find fences if you don't remember that. I also have the um, formula here, which is the Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range and for the lower and for the upper. So both of these for mine had no outliers. You may have some outliers. Um, you can just, um, if, if you do have an outlier, it asks you what year was that outlier, did that outlier occur? I'm going to find those fences there. Then based only on these box plots, which state is producing more CO2? You can see mine was pretty obvious. Yours might be closer in, than that, but you want to say who is to create, which one state is creating more, and then think of what could be a reason for that? You might have to look up online, like what is happening in these states? What's their main industry or something like that to see what maybe could be causing that. Number seven, you're going to use a graph um, using multivariable analysis in GeoGebra. That is a video on how to do this, comparing the year and the CO2 for each of the states you chose. Um, here we have emission per capita for Wisconsin. You have the year down here and then the um, um, values here and we do the same thing for Missouri and then it says um, make those graphs paste them in make sure they're labeled which one is Wisconsin and which one is Missouri um, does the graph show positive or negative correlation explain what you mean that means for this data and what do you think caused the drop in 2020 both of these mine had 20 I think you'll see a drop in 2020 just think about that then you want to answer that question, uh, does it show positive or negative? I included the line there so I could kind of see what's actually happening there. Um, negative, you would see a line that goes down from left to right. Positive would go up from left to right. And no correlation would be flat line. And so um, there I kind of answered that question. Um, and then the question is, which graph was most helpful in comparing the emissions for the two states? That is the box plot or the graph that you did in number seven. Uh, which one was most helpful in seeing the trend if it went up or down? That's that's I didn't answer that because that's up to you. Uh, what one did you think in your group was most uh, helpful? And then you're going to read this report um, and have a group discussion about at least three items you found interesting or compelling in this report, and then summarize your thoughts of your group in three to four paragraphs. Each person can contribute their thoughts, and then one person can write it up. I can't remember how I um, wrote that up for this group. Was, yeah. So your thoughts from, from the first person, the second person, the third person, Group member four, you can add your thoughts as you write up the paragraphs, three to four paragraphs on that. Sometimes there's people in the class that are uh, stronger in English and writing than others, so please volunteer for that if so, and maybe somebody else is better with technology. You could do some more of the graphs. I don't care how you split things up, but everybody should have other people looking over their work. And the last thing is to make an action plan. This is something, again, you need to be talking about as a group. Uh, think of something your group could do to inform people of, in the community of the CO2 crisis. Um, what, what did you see in the States? What could you do personally? I'd like you to take a little thought about that, not to say nothing I can do, but really think about what you could do as a group that might make a difference towards letting people know in your community or in your family, in your people that you work with, whatever, about what's going on with CO2. Okay, that is the end of this video. That should get you through this project. Have a fantastic day, and I'll talk to you next time.